Next up is the topic of adaptations. So adaptations just means how are animals or plants specially suited to live in the environment that they do. So there are different types of adaptations. There are anatomical, which is to do with the way the structure of the body. Uh, there's physiological, which is to do with the way that the body works. And then there's behavioural, which is just to do with the behaviour or the actions that the organism takes. So we need to look at uh, cold, hot and comp competition. So adapting for cold. Anatomical adaptations. Well, there is insulation. So having thick layers of fur or layers of fat, which helps keep the warm in. Having um, large body with small ears, so what that gives is a small surface to volume ratio. That phrase is one that they very much like, the surface to volume ratio. So when it's cold, you want a small surface to volume ratio. So I mean, if you imagine if you're in a cold, if you're cold, you might want to curl up in a ball because then you've got less surface area that's exposed to the cold. It's the same thing. Behavioural adaptations are things like migration or hibernation. So migration is just where they go somewhere warmer, so like the birds migrating every winter. And hibernation, just going to sleep, their body sort of shuts down for the cold season when it's there's not much food and it's just better just to sort of weather it out by not doing very much. So examples of animals that do that would be bears. They're good ones. Now, uh, physiological adaptations. This is just for the higher paper, this one. We need to know about something called a countercurrent system. Now, the exam board particularly mentions it being in penguins, but it exists in pretty much any mammal or birds as well. The idea is that uh, warm blood leaves your core, the core of your body and it goes out your extremities. And in your extremities, it gets cold. Now, if that cold blood just went back to your core, then that would lower your core body temperature. So what happens is that as the blood, the warm blood leaving your body, uh, leaving your core body, so going down your arm, gives some of its heat to the cold blood that is returning back to the core. So that the blood that returns back isn't really, really cold, so it doesn't drop your body temperature. So that's called the countercurrent system. And another physiological adaptation is that some organisms have what we call antifreeze proteins in their cells. So they're just designed so that they don't get um, ice crystals forming in their body, which would be deadly. So they just have these proteins that stop that from happening, and we just call them antifreeze proteins. Okay, adaptations to the hot and dry. So anatomical adaptations. Uh, less hair. So camels in particular don't have very much hair on their bellies because it allows them to lose uh, lots of heat. For the heat, we have this surface to volume ratio thing again, but they want to have small bodies and they often have big ears. So think elephants, they live hot places because that gives them a large surface to volume ratio. It's kind of like if you're in bed and you're really warm, you might stick your arm or your leg out from under the covers so that you can lose a bit of heat. Um, another adaptation is storing fat in one place, so camels humps, there's not water in there, it's fat. So all their body fat, all their reserves, is just stored in one place so that it's not insulating them the way that animals in colder environments might choose to have. And adaptations in plants are that their leaves have just got really, really thin and almost turned to spines because that reduces their water loss. And an example of this are cacti. cacti. So a cactus has got spines instead of leaves, and that reduces the amount of water that it loses. Some behavioural adaptations are going in the shade during the heat of the day, so being active at dawn and dusk rather than in the middle of the day when it's very hot. Panting, it's a way of losing a heat, so animals that do that quite a lot rather than sweating, that's an adaptation that they've adapted. And also some animals lick their fur as a way to... Uh, increase the heat loss so that they cool down faster. Some physiological adaptations are having the ability to store large amounts of water. So camels store lots of water in their blood and cacti store water in their roots. But this is a physiological adaptation. They, they are made to store that large amount of water. And for the higher, there are some creatures called extremophiles that have proteins that do not denature at high temperatures. 
Now, if you remember from when we were doing chemistry, denature means that the protein changes, changes shape, so it can't do its job anymore. Now, we don't want that to happen in our living creatures because they would be cooked. So these extremophiles have proteins that need much, much higher than normal temperatures for their proteins to denature. So the reason for these adaptations is so that animals can survive. And the way they survive is by competing with each other for their resources, as we discussed earlier. And there are two ways of going about it. You can either be a specialist, which are animals that are really well adapted to living in a specific habitat. So they're brilliant at surviving in one place, like polar bears. Polar bears are fantastically adapted to living in the really cold conditions that they live in. However, they wouldn't survive anywhere else. If I took a polar bear and put them um, in the, you know, on a country near the equator, they wouldn't survive at all. They would die very quickly. So that's an example of a specialist. They were really good at living in one habitat. Now the other option is to become a generalist. Now generalists are good at living everywhere, but they're not you know, really good at one thing. They could live anywhere. So for instance, rats. You find rats pretty much everywhere on this planet, and that's because they can survive pretty much anywhere. Now, because they are generalists, it means that if they were competing in an environment where there was a specialist, so if they were competing with a creature that lived in that environment, were perfectly adapted to it, the generalists would lose out. But if it was in an environment where the habitat changes a little bit, where things aren't constant, there's always change, then the generalists survive better and they can compete better. So it's about what's the best for um, the situation you're in. So specialists have um, managed to live or changed so that they can live in one place, but they can do it really, really well. Generalists have kind of hedged their bets. They've adapted themselves so that they can live in lots of different places, so they could survive in lots of different environments, but they aren't necessarily really, really good at surviving in any one of them. So generalists have hedged their bets and specialists have uh, put their chips all in one pile and said, right, we're going to live here. That's kind of the difference, really. Okay, so that is it for this one. Remember, if you've got any questions, don't forget to ask me when you see me.